Using the proper equipment, raise and support the vehicle, then remove the front wheel. Remove the brake reservoir cap and set it aside. This will be explained in a few steps. With a 12mm socket, remove the bolt for the brake hose. I typically reinstall the bolt a few threads so I know which bolt goes where and also so it doesn't get lost. Next remove the caliper assembly by removing the two 14mm flange bolts. Set the caliper aside by either hanging it by a piece of short wire or placing it on the lower control arm as shown. Be careful not to twist the brake hose too excessively though. Now you can remove the brake pads by pulling either the top or bottom of the pad away from the disc. Next remove the two 17mm caliper bracket bolts. You'll probably want a breaker bar for this as these bad boys are torqued down to 80 foot pounds. Using an impact screwdriver as shown here, or a powered impact driver, remove the flathead bolt on the brake disc. <coughs> remove the flathead bolt on the brake disc. If you've ever worked on Honda brakes before, you're probably pretty familiar how much of a pain this can be. If you can't get the bolt out, you can always drill it out and order some cheap replacements on Amazon. Okay, now we can remove the brake disc. If the disc is stuck to the hub, use an 8x125mm bolt like the brake hose caliper bolt and thread it into the two holes on the disc rotating between the two. Eventually the disc will pull away from the hub. Now is a good time to give the hub a quick cleaning with a soft bristle brush and some brake cleaner. I also recommend using a good anti-seize and applying it to all the metal mating surfaces. This should hopefully prevent any unwanted headaches in the future. Alright, now we're going to grab the new rotors. I went with PowerStop's Evolution coated rotors which help prevent rust. Make sure to thoroughly clean the back of the rotor now, as it's difficult to do once it's installed. Install the new rotor, making sure to line up the thread holes, and also making sure not to contaminate the back of the rotor. Apply a dab of anti-seize to the flathead bolt, reinstall, and torque to 7 pound-feet. Now onto the caliper bracket. First remove the pad retainers, and be careful here. These little suckers are sharp, and won't think twice about shanking you like you would at money in prison. Clean the bracket thoroughly with brake cleaner and a wire brush, removing any rust. Wrap the new pad retainers in assembly paste. The kit I ordered came with a small packet of paste. Apply a thin coat of assembly paste to the retaining mating surfaces of the caliper bracket. Now snap the pad retainer into its new home, again being careful. Reinstall the caliper bracket, being mindful of the new rotor, and torque the bracket bolts to 80 pound feet. Yeah, you heard it right, 80 pound feet. All right, onto the caliper. Go ahead and grab it and give it a good cleaning again with a wire brush and brake cleaner. You wanna make sure you get all the rust off. Here's a trick I picked up a couple years ago. Using an old pad and a clamp, you can use the two to slowly press the piston back in. You can see here the brake fluid slowly rise in the reservoir. The cap was previously removed to allow for expansion of the brake fluid. Ta da! You'll want the piston to be fully compressed like this, which makes installing new pads much easier. This way, there's room for the added thickness of the new pads. Alright, now loosely reinstall this top bolt of the caliper and swing it up and out of the way. On the new pads, apply a thin coat of anti-seize to the mating surfaces as well as the top and bottom of the pads where they contact the retaining clips. I realize I added a bit much here. Make sure you wipe off any excess anti-seize from the pads and friction material. Contaminated brake discs and pads significantly reduce stopping ability. Squeeze the pads together and pivot the brake caliper down to position over the pads. Reinstall the lower flange bolt and torque the two bolts to 37 pound-feet. Now we can reinstall the brake hose mounting bolt and torque that bad boy down to 16 pound-feet. So 
always a good idea to just go over everything with some brake cleaner and make sure you didn't accidentally contaminate the rotor or the pads. Lastly, you go ahead and reinstall the brake fluid reservoir cap. Hop in the car and press the pedal a few times. If the pedal feels soft the first couple of presses, keep pumping until it firms up. It may also be necessary to add brake fluid if normal pedal feel doesn't return. Reinstall the front wheel, carefully lower the vehicle, and torque the lug nuts to 80 pound-feet. Lastly, and probably most importantly, make sure the proper braking procedure recommended by the manufacturer is accomplished. This step is very important and ensures proper rotor to pad adherence, which helps eliminate brake pulsing. I really hope this video was helpful for you and you enjoyed watching it. Please feel free to like, share, and subscribe so you don't miss future videos like these. As always, thanks for watching.